My name is Pika Lynch, and I am going to do a presentation for you on low temperature sterilization and comparisons. Couple of things to note on the disclaimers part is that A, I am an employee of Stryker. This is approved for 0.25 credit hours. And of course, I always want you to consult with your instructions for use or IFU before utilization of any technology. The objectives for this are that we're going to review considerations for low temperature sterilization. We're also going to review low temperature sterilization options that are currently out there. And of course, we can't go through this until we talk a little bit about all the modalities that we have out there. STEAM is probably the most common that we see utilized. It uses high temperature and a uh, majority of the time it's 270 degrees for X amount of time, depending upon how you have your sterilization uh, sterilizers, your STEAM sterilizer set. It destroys all the microorganisms by a mechanism of pressure, heat, and time. The sterilization process takes anywhere from 10 to 60 seconds. And of course, that 10 minute period is your flash sterilization process. It also requires a dry time afterwards before instrumentation can be used as well as cooling. It is not compatible with certain materials. So we know one of the big drivers that we do with use of low temperature sterilization um, is those items that are heat sensitive that could actually be damaged during um, steam sterilization. And of course, steam sterilization is the most inexpensive form of sterilization that we have on the market. Now, um, ETO, and ETO has been utilized for a very long time. Fun fact on that is that ETO was um, utilized as early as back in World War I and II with um, sterilization of meal rations. It is low temperature. It is classified as low temperature. Um, it has high penetration of lumen accesses. It also has a very long aeration time. And that's because those chemicals that are used in ETO are carcinogenic. And so they have to be vented out over a long period of time um, to enable it to be safe, not only for humans, but also for the environment. It is a dated technology and there is potential legislation out there throughout states to close down ETO facilities and um, for obvious reasons. Low temperature, is vaporized hydrogen peroxide, um, could be with plasma, but it could also be with ozone or singular. Low temperature ranges anywhere from about 105 to 120 degrees. It is excellent for those heat sensitive materials, those lumens and cannulated equipment that we use. All of that intricate high technology equipment that cannot go into steam. It has a relatively short cycle. It's anywhere from 24 to 70 minutes. However, it is quite costly. As you can see from the timeline, ETO was used quite early on, um, all the way back to the 1960s, if not earlier than that. Um, but certainly in the 1960s for the, for the use of sterilization. And then the first one we saw come out in the 1990s was Sterad and that was vaporized hydrogen peroxide with plasma. And then Steris introduced their VPRO line in 2000, and um, that is vaporized hydrogen peroxide only. And then about 2012-13, um, Sterizone VP4 was introduced, and that utilizes vaporized hydrogen peroxide with ozone. Something that it really stands out to me with this timeline is the fact that if you think about how complex our equipment has become 
and more specifically just over the past 15 to 20 years. It's alarming how much that our low temperature sterilization modalities have not kept up with that. So the equipment that we're using has got far more complex with more nooks and crammies and crevices and things to take apart and uh, instructions to reference consistently on the cleaning, the processing, but also the sterilization piece. So it's important to note that even though our equipment has gotten far more complex, the sterilization modalities have been slow to catch up with that. Um, multitude of different companies out there, um, as you can see, providing these modalities of low temperature sterilization. But what are the technology drivers for the use of low temperature sterilization? Well, probably the number one and biggest um, is the growing global population that we have. The more individuals we have, the more need for use of it. It's also inevitably we have an aging population, which is a good thing. And then growth in minimally invasive surgeries. Um, and a lot of that newer technology, that more delicate instrumentation is used on these minimally invasive pr procedures. Also, the, um, the introduction of superbugs. Superbugs have always been around, but they seem to be surfacing more, especially with the increased usage of um, high-level disinfection. And of course, some of the more intricate equipment we're using is robotics and batteries. And I would be amiss if I didn't mention the fact that there are changes that are coming with the modified Spalding classification. And AORN actually took the ball and ran with this all the way back in 2016. But we have instrumentation um, that is going to be required for terminal sterilization. So as you can see, we have uh, a whole gamut of first generation, second generations, and latest technologies that have advanced through time with this. But let's go through these a little bit more in depth. With the Steris V Pro Max and the ASP Sterad All Clear, these are both low temperature sterilization processes that are utilizing anywhere from about 122 to about 131 degrees Fahrenheit. Both of these used vaporized hydrogen peroxide um, for terminal sterilization of those reusable medical devices that we have. Um, with the Steris V Pro, there is no secondary means of reducing that hydrogen peroxide residual, but with the Sterad um, ASP, uh, they do use an energy plasma field to break apart those peroxide vapors. Both of them utilize an atmospheric pressure by use of a HEPA filter um, through room air, and they both release only uh, water vapor and oxygen, and neither have a drain that is required. There is also no toxic residue released from either of these. The VP4 is a low temperature sterilization, about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The difference between this and the other one is that it utilizes two sterilants instead of just one vaporized hydrogen peroxide. It also utilizes ozone in the process, which allows it to be able to sterilize those multi-channel flexible scopes. So in other words, those flexible scopes that have more than two channels on it. Um, the sterizone also allows you to be able to sterilize mixed loads. So there's not a separation of loads with it. It too releases only water vapor and oxygen, no toxic residues, freestanding or recessed for um, installation. It does utilize a 240 um, 
electrical outlet. And then it also requires an external oxygen concentrator. So on this page, you can see that we're doing an overall comparison of the sterilizers. And right off the bat, you can see with both Steris V Pro and Sterid 100 All Clear, um, they have a multitude of different cycles that range anywhere from about 16 minutes up to 60 minutes. The purpose of this is for the separation of instrumentation. So it's up to the user to pick which cycle is best suited for the instrumentation that they're going to run in there. And there are a multitude of different times that are utilized here. Um, with the Stryker Sterizone VP4, it's only one cycle. So you can do mixed loads with it. I oftentimes will say, stop, don't think of this as a low temperature sterilizer. Think of it as your steam sterilizer. It loads absolutely identical to a steam sterilizer. Solid items on the bottom, um, wrapped and peel packed items on the top. They all use hydrogen peroxide, but as you can see, we have different um, concentrations. Both Steris and Sterad utilize a 59% concentration, but Sterad also increases that concentration based on the cycle that you're using. The Stryker Sterizone VP4 utilizes a 50% concentration. Weight restrictions, um, again, you have to take into consideration those different cycles that you're going to be utilizing. Um, but as you can see from Steris and Sterad, the different cycles range from anywhere about 10.7 pounds all the way up to 50 pounds. But the user has to be cognizant of what they're putting in the sterilizer and what the weight is of those items. With the Stryker Sterizone VP4, it has a 75 pound weight capacity. It has three shelves on a loading rack so that weight can be evenly distributed. Also load configurations and instrumentation. Again, we go back to those different cycles and how is your sterilizer loaded? And in this, you must consult with um, the manufacturers to make sure that you are putting in the correct um, item for the correct cycle. So it always goes back to the cycle. Um, and then you can see with both Steris and Sterad, it's one XI scope. You can run up to two flexible scopes at a time. With Steris, you can run dual scopes, but with Sterad, you cannot run dual channel scopes. With Stryker Sterizone VP4, you can run up to three XI scopes at one time, but you can also run three flexible scopes at one time for a total of five channels. And it can do dual channel scopes as well as multi-channel scopes. The footprint on all three of these is relatively similar to each other, and the Stryker Sterizone VP4 is slightly larger. Challenge of biologicals with technology. So one of the things that I really wanted to um, ensure that everyone is aware of is that you should be running biologicals with every single cycle. Each one of these cycles have specifications for load restricted by device to be processed. And each one of these may operate a little bit different and put in different amounts of sterilant. So it's important that when you're testing those and specifically with the Sterad and the Steris systems, because Sterad has got seven different cycle parameters within all their uh, low temperature modalities. And then the VPro systems have six different cycle parameters. So you want to make sure that you're testing all of those parameters on your sterilizer. And again, make sure that you are consulting the IFU on this as well. In the Sterizone VP4, it utilizes the BI and the test pack, but there is only one cycle. And that is because with the Sterizone VP4, 
it utilizes a variable injection cycle. So it only puts out the amount of sterilant that you need for the load. It can process 75 pounds and load is not restricted to separation of instrumentation. So you can mix those loads. So considerations for low temperature sterilization. And, and these are true of all forms of low temperature sterilization and specifically those that utilize hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide in itself is sensitive to temperature. So temperature matters on this. It matters for all modalities. Also, instrumentation must be dry. Hydrogen peroxide will grab a hold of moisture within your load and, and or it could lead to an aborted cycle. Of course, we always want to consider compatibility of instrumentation as well as containers. Are they compatible with the modality of sterilization that you're going to be utilizing? And of course, this is chemical sterilization and chemical sterilization is highly susceptible to interactions with other chemicals. So rinsing with deionized water is an important process to putting instrumentation into a low temperature sterilizer. With sterilization moving forward, mixed loads are gonna be important. We are increasing the number of items that we are currently sterilizing in low temperature. And so the importance of being able to utilize this efficiently. So as you can see from the pictures, loads pretty much just like a steam sterilizer does. Heavier items on the bottom, certainly those solids on the bottom, and you wanna keep your wrapped um, above or onto the sides of it. Also with this one, you see two um, larger scopes on the bottom of it, but then you see full usage of that top rack with not only pill packed instruments, but also wrap batteries. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed the presentation.